So welcome everybody to our, um, we're sort of past the hump, we're more than halfway through our TWEDS for uh, spring of 2016. Um, just a, a couple of logistical reminders before we get started. Um, we've got a ton of pizza back there. We, for some reason, they, uh, they ordered extra pizza, so eat up and, and please help at the end, as you always do, taking this up to the fridge. Um, this is being streamed live out to the interwebs, so um, just keep that in mind as you ask questions. Um, please, if you haven't already, and most of you have not, please sign up for uh, the TWED Lightning Talks at the end of the term. The, the link is in the announcement message, which I know you all got, and which is also accessible from the TWED website. Um, and without further ado, thank you very much, Lee Fu, for uh, talking today, talking about the your research topic. Um, please feel free to ask questions. He's got a, a lot of information to talk today. Um, take it away. Thank you very much. Um, uh, first, uh, I will um, give a short introduction about myself. Uh, my name is Ifu Huang. Um, I'm a second year PhD student in Provost Community School. Uh, my research mainly focuses on uh, uh, information extraction and uh, deep learning techniques. Um, my current research topic is uh, liberal information extraction. Um, compared with uh, traditional uh, information extraction, which uh, redefine what to uh, extract and uh, researchers design methods to, uh, to extract the, the facts, uh, the entities, the events, according to the predefined uh, schema. Uh, our liberal information extraction paradigm um, take human out of the I loop. We don't uh, require any predefined uh, schema or any uh, entity generator, we can uh, automatically discover all the uh, facts like uh, entities, events, relations, and also we can simultaneously uh, construct a, 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 a rich schema. So this is a background knowledge. And this work is about um, uh, event extraction be um, following the, the liberal IE paradigm. First is some um, definition of terms in uh, event extraction. Uh, Tom, so we, we lost your, we lost your slide there. Can you, when you went to full screen, I think we lost it. Oh. Is that okay? Yes, that works. Is okay. it okay to present that way? Okay, okay, okay. Um, event, event mission means um, a string of words uh, is a task denoting a particular event, and the event trigger is a word or phrase holds the, the main semantic content of the event, and event arguments uh, denotes the participants of the specific event. And argument rows means the function of each participant. So uh, this figure shows an uh, example, and the, the bold words uh, means the event trigger, like kill, uh, injure, and fighting. And the, um, uh, it uh, the underlined uh, phrase uh, shows the, the arguments for each specific event. The word uh, or the, the, the or each arc uh, shows uh, the row of each argument. Um, this figure shows um, some comparison between uh, traditional event extraction and our liberal event extraction. Uh, traditional event extraction takes a predefined uh, event schema and the human defined guideline as input and to, uh, to extract the events and the uh, arguments as output. Our liberal event extraction paradigm, we do not require any predefined knowledge. We just take uh, available 
linguistic resources as input, and we can uh, simultaneously extract the events and arguments from each specific sentence, and uh, uh, also construct a rich and uh, corpus customized uh, event schema. Uh, next, I will show some uh, examples to demonstrate our motivations. Um, from these three tables, uh, these three tables shows shows uh, the most uh, similar words based on uh, next week in mining. Uh, from the group of similar words, uh, which centered uh, injure and fight, these two triggers, we can find that the type of the event trigger is uh, highly related with uh with with the with with its uh general semantic but for some words like fair uh which are poly semantic the general semant the, the uh semantic related words may uh reflect several types of of event so, so What's what's the score? Uh, the score uh, shows the the, the similarity uh, between the the the, the words with this uh, center word. So this score shows the <laughs> words between the this. So the, uh, the, the the column of the words like uh, injured is where they come from. Uh, it's from the the whole uh embedding model uh which is trained from the the whole wikipedia dam so this table shows uh we, we first train uh embedding model from the whole wikipedia and uh, we uh extract the most uh, similar words to uh injure to find to fair based on this uh, based on, embedding based on sport right based on sport yeah, yeah the smart is well how do, you, how do you compute the score? Uh, this score is uh, uh, computed based on uh, cosine similarity. Right. Based on the two vectors of injury and the uh, uh, hurt. And how do you compute the vector? Uh, uh, the, the vector is tuned based on this uh, uh, embedding model. Uh, this this embedding model contains all the words extracted from Wikipedia dump and uh, all the vector representations of each word. So based on these vectors, we can compute. Uh, we, we can use cosine similarity to compute the similarity between each pair of words. So uh, we have the first uh, hypothesis that uh, event triggers that occur in uh, similar contexts and share the same sense tend to have uh, similar types. And we propose to uh, uh, learn uh, versus uh, WSD based uh, lexical inviting to uh, represent its uh, specific uh, uh, sense semantic, semantics. And uh, um, sometimes, besides uh, the lexical, uh, the, the lexical inviting of the trigger itself, the type uh, of the given trigger is also uh, depend on the specific scenario. For example, in the second sentence, if we know the event per course occur in a reading scenario, we will not assign a uh, type like injure to this event, and if we know the uh, event loss occurring in uh, gambling uh, scenario in the third example, uh, we will uh, determine the type of loss as uh, loss of money instead of loss of life. So we have the second uh, hypothesis that beyond the lexical semantics of a particular event trigger, its type is also depend on its arguments and their roles as well as other 
as a context for uh, context for words. So we um, propose uh, event structure to denote the the specific scenario and generate a uh, event structure uh, representation to to uh, uh, represent the specific scenario. And uh, uh, if uh, the type of even trigger is also related with the type of arguments. For example, if we know the patient of cap capture is a is a person in uh, like in the false example, uh, we will assign an arrest uh, type to this to this event because. Um, because the patient the, is the patient of this event is a person, which is similar as the the, the event trigger like arrested in the sixth um, example, and uh, if we know the 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 patient the type of the patient is a vehicle mm -hmm. like the Italian ship in the fifth uh, example, we will assign a type like transfer ownership to this. Uh, capture event. So, so that's interesting. So, how does the context affect um, the interpretation of capture? So, you could have it. Uh, the Italian officer was captured by Palestinian terrorists. That 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 usage of capture, you would you and would you interpret that differently? Would you have a different Instead yeah. of transfer ownership, you would have something. Yeah, like we uh, use uh, the arguments to uh, infer the type of events. We will use the, the arguments uh, with the same uh, uh, with the same relation to the trigger. For example, in this mm -hmm. fifth example, this internship is the patient of this uh, uh, word capture, yes. and this. This phrase is the uh, agent of the capture event. So when we uh, compare the, uh, when we use the, the arguments to uh, infer the type of event, we will use the patient, this three, uh, three uh, phrase to um, so, okay. compare the smart. So I, I, I think I understand. So, um, so in that first one, example four, capture, that event is at rest. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you said the the Italian the Italian soldier instead of Italian ship, you yeah, said the Italian soldier, yeah, um, was captured by Palestinian terrorists. It, it, you wouldn't, it, it wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't want it to be an event arrest. You want it to be well, maybe, I mean, I suppose. The terrorist perspective, they were arrested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it'd be more like kidnapping. I mean, would be another way to interpret it. So, um, I'm, I'm just curious if, if they, or, it, or would it? Is it simpler than that? Would it come out uh, a yeah, rest probably? Uh, our general idea for this part is uh, we want to use mm -hmm. the tap of the arguments to right. um, to. Uh, 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 enforce the the triggers with the same type of arguments to be to have the same event type. So be, because uh, capture and uh, arrest, these two words already have the similar uh, lexical embeddings. So yeah. if they also share the same type, uh, the same the same type of arguments, for example, they all share a uh, person patient yeah. person type. Patient, they may be uh, much. They, they may turn to how uh, similar even have. Right. So okay, I I I think I understand. I think I think what you're saying is that it would it would successful in my example, which is example five a. <laughs> it would it would if that was a person rather than a, a, a ship. It would it would it would cause the event to be a. a um, a, a more appropriate uh, type, and it would probably be something like arrest. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, How do you identify which part of the sentence is it? 
uh, this this argument is uh, it's generally based on a uh, semantic parser uh, like AMR or uh, NC parsing. These tools can um, efficiently extract these arguments. So next, I will talk about this. Uh, we have the third hypothesis is um, is that similar semantics, even they share um, similar types of participants, tend to have similar event types. So um, based on this uh, uh, hypothesis, we design such um, framework. Um, the first step, step is uh, to identify the trigger and argument candidates. And next, we generate uh, two types of representations. And we, then we take these two types of representations as input to a joint trigger and argument clustering algorithm to detect the event types, the argument rules, and uh, uh, event schema. Uh, the first type is uh, an identification. Uh, the trigger identification is based on uh, AMR parser. Uh, we, for each sentence, we apply uh, AMR parser to uh, connect each to try to connect each word to uh, onto all things. So if if a word can be connect to can be connected to uh, a specific onto nodes since we will uh, make it as a trigger candidate. And to enrich the trigger candidate site, we also uh, use all the verb concepts in frame night as uh, trigger candidates. And the arguments uh, is, is extracted based on uh, AMR parsing. Like for, for, for example, we use a uh, subset of AMR relations to filter out the, the, the semantic related concepts as arguments, like uh, the location, the arg1, and the, uh, the op1, op2, these um, AMR relations to uh, filter out the uh, arguments. And the, Next is to learn uh, uh, WSD based uh, uh, next or representation. Uh, we use a uh, state of art uh, WSD tool to uh, pre -process, process the whole uh, Wikipedia dump <laughs> and use a sweep gram for directed model to learn uh, next or embeddings for each concept. Uh, based on the Embedding model, we uh, try to uh, extract the top 10 most similar words for a fair, fair, fair one. Here, the fair one means the first since in a fair in autonomous, and the fair two means the second since uh, in autonomous. So, based on these results, we can see that uh, the WSD based the uh, the uh, semantic related concepts works based on WSD based uh, next embedding can better capture the, 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 the type information. And next is um, we uh, design a recursive near tensor autoencoder framework to learn uh, uh, event structure representation to denote the specific scenario of each event. Uh, we take the third sentence as an example. Um, this figure shows a part of the original AMR annotations for this sentence. And based on these annotations, we uh, generate a event structure for the trigger candidate those. And based on this event structure, we use uh, the uh, recursive neural tensor of the encoder. We uh, use each, uh, for each AMR relation, we use a tensor to represent it. And uh, uh, for each two, uh, two, two uh, 
uh, nodes in this given uh, structure, we use uh, of encoder to generate uh, compositional representations uh, to denote the 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 the, the, the structure uh, representation. And I will show um, uh, specific a uh, specific layer of uh, computational representation. First, uh, uh, assuming we take x, two vectors x and y as the input of uh, our encoder, we um, use uh, <coughs> w mode this tensor to represent the specific mm -hmm. emulation modifier, and we we use this function to generate a computational representation of the UI and to op optimize uh, the computational uh, representation Z1. We try to reconstruct the input to vectors and generate the uh, output uh, vectors X dot and Y dot. And we uh, try to minimize the loss between the output layer and the input layer to get the optimized uh, representation of Z1. Uh, uh, the basic uh, idea of this optimization is we propagate the error, the loss, the error loss from the output layer to the hidden layer and uh, use this uh, loss to um, to update the the parameters, the, the parameters uh, the, including the tensor representations, uh, W modifier, and W dot modifier, and B and B dot. This process uh, will uh, it uh, iterate at until we get the the minimum minimize the loss for all the uh, unit structures. So take these two um, types of representations as input to a um, joint constraint class three algorithm. We can discover um, the trigger clusters and the argument clusters and each cluster denotes a specific type. Uh, this clustering, uh, the idea of this clustering uh, algorithm is uh, we first use special clustering algorithm to initialize the two clusters and augment clusters. Then we use the clustering results of arguments and the uh, MR semantic constraints between triggers and arguments to update the similarity matrix of the triggers and uh, to, uh, then to update the classing results of, of, of triggers. Then we uh, similarly we use the trigger the trigger clusters to update the, the argument uh, uh, classing results. And uh, uh, we use two internal measures, uh, coherent, uh, coherent, which means the the inter distance of the instance within a, a specific cluster, and uh, a separation measure, which means the distance of uh, inter clusters uh, of uh, instances in different clusters. So based on these two uh, metrics, uh, we can uh, we, we design such um, uh, objective function to get optimal clusters of trigger and uh, arguments. Based on these optimal trigger clusters and argument clusters, we will also assign a name for each type. Uh, the, the event type is uh, named based on uh, the specific uh, event trigger, which is the most similar, which is uh, nearest to the centroid of the cluster. 
and so argument renaming we try to use uh, all the uh, all the row names in uh, defined in uh, existing linguistic resources and map AMR rows uh, to this uh, to the row names in uh, stream night, row night, and prop bump. Uh, this two table shows the uh, this this table shows the core row mapping uh, AMR core row mapping uh, uh, to the row names in stream night, row night, and prop bump. And this table shows the uh, AMR non core row mapping to the frame net rows. So based on these two uh, mapping results, we can assign uh, a row for each argument according to the to 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 uh, to the specific event type. We uh, carry out the experiments on uh, AS and the EIE data set, and uh, this table shows a uh, uh, sample output of our Finally, final uh, event schema. Uh, besides the the event types like transport and dive, which can be mapped to the predefined event schema in AS and ERE, we can also discover some new event types like build and threaten. And uh, we also compare the coverage of our event. Uh, of the UN schema uh, uh, generate based on our, our approach and the predefined is and the ERE schema. Uh, the human columns shows the, the, the predefined is and the ERE schema and the system MR column shows the uh, UN schema generated based on a uh, system AMR results. And the perfect AMR column shows the uh, uh, event schema uh, generated based on perfect AMR annotations. Besides uh, new event types, uh, our approach can also discover some new arguments for uh, for uh, each uh, event type. For example, besides the uh, arguments uh, argument rows are uh, predefined in AS. We can also dis discover a new argument like purpose for uh, attack event. And to evaluate the performance of the of event extraction, we uh, ask two uh, human annotators to annotate, annotate 100 sentences, uh, and we. Um, use a uh, precision record and uh, an F score to uh, demonstrate the uh, performance based on perfect AMR and uh, system AMR respectively. With the uh, analysis of the extraction results, we find the missing triggers are mainly uh, multiple more expression, expressions like to office all the words that are not uh, work or non concepts like uh, the, the words in this uh, example sentence previously and the form, formerly these two uh, to these two words are um, uh, triggers uh, 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 trigger instance of uh, end position even type so based on because our approach mainly uh, consider all the work and non concepts as trigger candidates, so we cannot identify such uh, event triggers. And for the arguments, because we uh, heavily rely on semantic parsing like AMR, so we cannot detect the arguments that are, that are not direct semantic related with the uh, event triggers. Uh, to evaluate the impact of uh, each representation and the uh, AMR uh, roles, we uh, dis uh, we design several uh, baseline systems to 
demonstrate the uh, effectiveness of uh, structure representation and the LSD based representation and the non core rules and the core rules for uh, event and the argument extraction. We also try to use uh, demand sparsing to replace MR, but the performance of uh, argument uh, extraction is very bad. Um, this, uh, this sentence uh, shows the uh, comparison results uh, based on AMR and the dependency relations. So for example, uh, in AMR, uh, uh, the system can uh, parse the word gun as an instrument of uh, the word battle, but based on uh, it, uh, dependency parsing, uh, it can only uh, assign a, a component a modifier, a modifier uh, uh, a relation between the GAN and the battle. So uh, MR, the conclusion is uh, the rich MR relations should be much meaningful to infer the, the, the argument to extract and uh, you check the, the arguments and for the, the rules of arguments. Uh, we also try to um, evaluate the performance of the uh, UN schema on the predefined ACE and ERE types. We um, first manually assign, uh, assess triggers to ACE and uh, ERE and use the subsite to uh, show the comparison performance. Uh, we also use uh, three uh, supervised uh, baseline systems, including uh, 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 CN based method and uh, uh, joint AE based method and uh, pipeline RSTM based method. So uh, the performance of, of our approach is not as good as the uh, supervised uh, uh, systems. Uh, but uh, when we uh, adopt the, these systems mm -hmm. to another data set uh, like uh, uh, ERE, uh, the performance of the supervised method will, uh, will be much different because the, the performance of such supervised methods uh, heavily rely on the quality and the quantity of the training, training data. But our approach, we uh, do not need any uh, training data or predefined uh, knowledge. So, when we, uh, so our, our framework can be easily adapted to any other domains or topics. So we also uh, experiment on uh, biomedical domain to extract the events. We use um, about uh, more than 700 sentences as data site, uh, and we randomly sample 100 sentences and ask um, domain expert, a biomedical domain expert, to uh, assess the correctness of the uh, event identification and the classification as argument identification and the classification. So the performance of event extraction of biomedical domain is very good. And based on our analysis of the results, we find the, the events the triggers in biomedical domain are not uh, uh, ha, 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 has, has not as much as disability as US domains. So this is uh, my uh, recent work. Uh, so can you go back and, and explain that a little bit? Just a little bit. Yeah. yeah, so I actually have uh, some questions about S. Sentence one. Um, 
So are you using that as an example of something that's been typed correctly or incorrectly? Uh, uh, this is a uh, correct uh, result. It is not correct. Uh, what is a patient? Oh, uh, you mean the, the low? The, the yeah. Low, the low patient? Um, because the, the law is um, not defined for a specific domain. So the law names are shared for any domains. And we, also, we, we have no domain specific knowledge to infer the, the, the specific laws of uh, the GDP in a biomedical domain or in other domains. So we use uh, the 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 uh, commonly used uh, raw names. And where where did it get patient from? That's that's based on his model. That's mm -hmm. that's his usage of the word patient. It has nothing to do with biomedical stuff. Go yeah. go back to your, one of your yeah, diagrams. I was just confused by that. Yeah. I mean, so if we were to give you an ontology that talked about how some of this stuff worked, would you be able to train on it correctly? Mostly correctly, maybe. Uh, we, we don't take training. Yeah, we. That's the whole point is it doesn't train. Well, yeah. Well, but we're not necessarily training data, but like um, background, background knowledge in general. Are you able to bootstrap on existing background knowledge? So you you said something about using WordNet and things like that. Uh, but the real names are uh, instructed based on uh, FreeNet and WebNet. And this resource uh, are defined for general domains like news. So the real names are not customized for specific domains. So this, um, <coughs> so this particular thing is he's, he's showing the his extraction result. Hydrolysis is is the event that he's put yep. out. Yeah. And hydrolysis he's identifying as does something and yields something. Okay. The, so the, the does something too is what they call the patient. And then I'll ask yeah. you to scroll back to one of your diagrams to show that. Okay. So that's the patient. GTP is in in their model the patient of, of this event. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the exactly. result of that um, uh, that the so the result of that is GDP. Okay, so it's so um, so go to one of your diagrams that shows oh. shows that that breakdown. Uh, it means this. No, no, no. Well, that's that. The one of the uh, a little bit further. That, that, maybe that was it. Hold on. Uh, no, no. We go back a little bit further to. That, that, I think it was. Uh, I think it was there. Yeah. So this is one example. Oh, um, yeah. um, so there's there's a, a couple other good ones too, but there's the the events have these different aspects to it so oh I see and it's just the words that they mm -hmm. that they happen to use it's not it has nothing to do with the fact that it's a biomedical thing that's what's confusing right. you, you you know yeah. too much about biomedical mm -hmm. here yeah okay you, you, there, there was another diagram maybe maybe a little bit uh, I, 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 uh, I think I think uh you are talking about this but that also helps yeah this this table this table shows uh Real mapping from uh, MR laws to the real names in defined in the framework, program, and program. So if uh, for each uh, trigger, if we assign the unit type as a uh, pair, we will uh, assign the argument real names according to the uh, arguments uh, MR uh, call laws. Like uh, if argument is uh, R zero of this uh, event, we will assign a name, uh, a name agent as a uh, argument real name. Okay. And so, within a particular domain, domain, you can potentially interpret these roles in, into some sort of knowledge structure. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, this. So mm -hmm. if I know that this is being talked of, talking about a specific context, then I can say if this you know, this sort of relationship and a role it's, it's talking about this being used in this way. And 
um, this these are the general uh, yeah. rules. Yeah. So we uh, haven't considered any uh, domain specific knowledge. Oh, I'm talking about after the fact, inter interpreting the. So basically, what John just did for me to explain <laughs> what that meant, yeah. that would be something that we could potentially do automatically. But we just can ship them. Yeah, exactly. I'll, I'll just yeah. put you right right in here and. Uh, a little gift. Well, could could you maybe do something that like what if like the hype was the hydrolysis process and then do some sort of to an ontology saying like if the, the new event is hydrolysis yeah yeah it, like it's, r0 for this particular case is what is it the the thing that's being acted on and the second argument is the product the result yeah yeah it's a good idea but um our point for this this work is we want to make this framework uh can be easily adapted to any uh, domains any okay. problems, so we will not adopt any domain specific knowledge or ontology okay. knowledge. Okay. So, so this meta meta knowledge, mm -hmm. this is this is how it's all connected. But then, and we're all like, we would have put an ontology on it. But I, yeah. <laughs> this does this to this, but I don't have no idea what that means. <laughs> So are there any other questions? Do I do have several questions? Of course you do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so I I pretty much lost during your presentation because you know I don't really have the expertise that you have to interpret all the stuff and representing a bunch of abbreviations that you're talking about like MR stuff and this it's, it's just not that easy to remember all those stuff. But if you can go back to the Third slide. Uh, not three. Yeah. Four. I want to. Okay. So sentence one. Um, could you please just uh, read the sentence and uh, explain what are those labels? Oh, I mean the labels. Okay. Um, the both words you know the triggers. Uh, contain in this specific sentence, and the the underlined uh, phrase or word, you know, the arguments uh, for a specific event, and the, the words uh, in the brackets shows the uh, event type for each event trigger, and the words uh, or the, each arc shows the uh, the argument row uh, for uh, each. And it's arguments. So, why kill is this like this label defined by? Why is 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 defined in uh, A's? Uh, because uh, after kill, this the sing the single word kill can be assigned with several even types like. Uh, die like kill or injure, but in this specific specific sentence, uh, it should be this this word uh, shows the information that the two marines are dead. So, so like, because you don't take any input data, you don't have you don't know any schema before you dive into this frame. And when only that sentence goes into your frame, framework, how do you know that which word is an event, which word is a division? Uh, in the, the identification, uh, we first we we, we uh, for the identification we first use um, MR to craft this specific sentence. And this word here will be linked to a specific sense in Antonov, like Q01. Uh, it so means the first sense of Q in Antonov. So we, we use all the concepts that 
that can be linked to unknowns as trigger candidates. And for the arguments, we will use the a subset of AMR relations to filter out the semantic related concepts as arguments. For example, uh, based on AMR, we will uh, get the information that two marines are the argument one of this kill, uh, this concept. So uh, we um, select a subset of relation and why is uh, contained in this subset. So we will share, uh, we will make this phrase as uh, argument candidate of this event. AMR is abstract. Um, Meaning representation. Okay. It seems to me that AMR has already had some like knowledge, set of knowledge. It is, um, because it, 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 it actually is in, incorporates all the uh, available uh, uh, semantic parsing resource like uh, defensive parsing and the uh, semantic labeling. Uh, it covered all the this uh, existing uh, tools and uh, more and define a uh, more uh, 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 much richer set of uh, relations, uh, semantic relations, and uh, types of facts to uh, generate a uh, more uh, semantic graph. Just like AMI, yeah, right, it's like ontology. <laughs> nice concepts and relations and just uh, provide you that knowledge and big examples. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's operating at a lower level. I think yeah. you no, know, I, I think with with your um, I think you're reading too much into it is actually what you're saying. No, I mean you're you're saying that because it's ex because it's it's pulling on structure. Right. In, a, in a pretty compelling way, it's, it's figuring out the structure based on rules. Yeah, it's a, based on rules. Based on rules. Yeah. It's, you know, when we say that uh, we use the AMR to parse the sentence, and, and the AMR gives you um, the argument in, in a row and identifies which which is the event and which 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 predicated is the point event. That's already sound like a uh, background knowledge. Instead of you saying that we, we don't take anything instead of the, the stuff we want to protest. We don't take any schema when we protect it. But when you use AMR, it's that's like you still have some schema. Huh. So I, I, I think so in a way, yeah, so you know, in a way you're right in the sense that it's producing like it's it's diagramming. So I think I think Han is also using this use some of this yeah. and stuff. And, it, and it's like what in the, so at some point in, in our school, I don't know in, in schools around the world they do this, but in America the uh, United States when you were went through elementary school, like at one point they had to diagram sentences. Mm -hmm. You know what that means where you you've got an English sentence and it's it's exactly what this is, you know, where you Pulling out the different parts of the sense of structure, essentially, what um, applying certain abstract rules to to guide them. You're not trying to understand the sentence. You're, you're trying to to, um, to piece apart what the equivalent of the subject predicate object is different from the gerunds and things. And what are the different parts that affect the other parts? Okay. And it um, it really doesn't serve much useful purpose when you do the inverse. I mean, it really doesn't. You know, I mean, it, 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 the argument is it helps you. It's educational. Well, it's, 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 it's great. It's a pedagogical <laughs> tool. Yeah, pedagogical tool to piss off students. But, you know, what it, what it does do is it helps you understand the role of the consensus structure. It helps you get grammar right. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, that's fine. Because, you know, AMR will break. If the sentence doesn't have good structure, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. If, so it assumes that there's that there's it assumes that there's structure to discover. 
if there's, if there's no structure. If you tried to apply it to me, for example, it would break. <laughs> Computers would crash. Okay, but it doesn't, it doesn't. So I, I, so I think, but it, but it, what it does is because it, it applies in a standard way, and because the domain of the of the text you're using is probably things like news reports or intelligence reports and things like that. There's a certain a, a plausible or a reasonable assumption that there's good structure to them, so that there's information that can be pulled out. Well, the grammar. Structure only defines each one the subject which one is created, an object. But when it comes to this sentence, how do you know no, that no, grammar does a lot more than that? So grammar is the full uh, the, the full structure of a language. Right, but does grammar contain any semantics? Does the grammar allow me to know if what that skill meant? Well no, it does well so it doesn't have the denotation, the, the linking of the symbols to the things that they, they mean. Um, but the interrelationships and what you can infer from the, from the sentence is embedded in the grammar of it. I mean, that's the syntax. Yes, yeah, that, that's the and the syntax, syntax, actually, the syntax extends even further down than they show here. Um, and there are a number of linguistics theories within the syntax field that will tear this apart into a very deep tree. Uh, based on the, the way that it's uh, structured. So, so this this pulls out the correct sense of particular <clears throat> words, which would otherwise be difficult to assign. And you could you could do what was being asked of of, of assigning this, associating this with the, um, uh, domain ontology. Hmm. You could vary. This is the this is the starting point for doing that. And because you know because AMR will, will have presumably done its job. It, it understands what, what, in what sense this word is being used. Then you can do a much more accurate assignment uh, association with that from that domain of uh, ontology, and and therefore you can get more, um, more closer to understanding. But you can't do it. if you just did straight NLP on it without the sort of not taking into consideration that structure, mm -hmm. um, you might not you might not have that. How else are you going to know? Mm -hmm. In what way is it? The word fire. You know, fire. How is fire being used? And AMR to this process is going to is going to pull that out and see whether or not it's 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 an event okay, or is it something. I put out the fire. Okay. I think that's the patient, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, but so, but that's the point. So, then, so that's how you do it. So, any other questions, Ray? No. Oh, too sharp. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. All right. What's so, the between patient and victim? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, so victim. The victim is a specific role in uh, attack. Event. It is a specific role of patient in attack event. Okay, so, so it's a, uh, it, it is a sub-role then. Yeah, uh, based on our method, um, uh, actually, this, um, the core role may be results. Uh, 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 if, if I, uh, um, I, I remember it, um, this core role may be results should contain the, some uh, in attack event triggers like attack, like uh, battle. So uh, if this mapping results contain such triggers, and we will map the uh, the one the one from AMR auto to the frame net role like uh, victim, and if we cannot map it to frame net role. We will map it to overnight flow, and in overnight, the uh, argument one will be mapped to a patient. Okay. So, so, if overnight, if we cannot find the the, the low mapping results uh, in overnight, we will map it to a prop bank, and actually, in prop bank, it will uh, assign a more specific low name for. So the 
location should come from the fortnite and the, the, the real name in fortnite actually are uh, uh, well defined for uh, event uh, mm -hmm. automatic frames and the elements in ProProc are more uh, specific for uh, event arguments. Any other questions? That was. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. All right. Can I get some help taking that stuff upstairs? I consolidated pizzas into two boxes and and take the the shells upstairs. I'm gonna have send a note to those guys that they need to figure out a way to give us the shelves in a way that doesn't collapse on top of all right all right thank you let's see jim here's your million dollar cord no yeah, they, they, they have them two even, years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sorry. It was it was a million dollars, but you can get them grocery stores now. Yeah. Seriously. I mean, our local Hannaford has most of the what's that? Like laser pointers that used to oh. be like you know you can only get them like monogrammed for like eighty dollars from like catalogs and I can buy them at the grocery store specifically to play with your cat. That's well specific. You said the right word specifically to play with your cat. Yeah. <laughs> whatever, whatever fills that category. Yeah. That's right. That's this is. And it's almost a perfect, perfect thing. Yeah. The interweb and cat toys. Yeah. To be fair, I think that was using. Uh, yeah, 20 years ago, I was using it for a while. Yeah. But I mean, like, 20 years ago, it cost a lot more, and you use it for other things, right? Other than just playing with your cat. No. So you bought it specifically to play with your cat. Yeah, and it wasn't good. Oh, this is. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Whichever one is the black one. One of them is black. One of them they have the one that does the HDMI. One of them is the other one. And the one that does the HDMI is what? 70. That's my R code running through the end. It's almost, it's almost. All right. Thank you very much, Ray, as always, for helping. Yeah, well, if, if, you heard, if, you, if you haven't done it before, you're under Uber. Yeah. Uber. 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 Have you seen uh, Man in the High Castle? I don't think so. Oh, my dad loves it. Oh, it's really great. But, so one of the characters in it is an uh, uh, Uber group of <laughs> <laughs> So it's like really awkward to kind of like yeah. just slide that in the conversation, but they somehow do it. And, yeah. Extremely German title and the extremely English name. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's you know it's always being addressed that way. So it's like it stops it, sounding weird. Yeah, well, it also like conversation. It feels like conversations grinding to a halt as they're saying the word. Oh. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Uber group in fear. Yeah. Uber group in fear. Smith. 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 Not Schmidt. Not Schmidt. No, Smith. No. Um, in fact, he's very, yeah, he's also not very not airy. Uh, he's 
not um, original character. Anyway, uh, he, he like, I don't know, he's like, oh, I have Amazon Prime, I don't need Netflix. You can't get, well, you can't, you can't, you can't get Daredevil. Well, is, is there all that other stuff? No. Also, cards. I don't need to watch that. I've I'm I'm I've used up most of the British procedural yeah. dramas. <laughs> I've, I've done all all years all uh, all all series all episodes of Midsummer Murders mm -hmm. and a couple others. Oh, have you seen? I, 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 um, is that one with um, Yeah. Oh, I I I've I've started seeing that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I started into that oh, one. Wow. Yeah, well, the, the the Brits are pretty good at the, the. There was the other one. What was the one that was based in Sweden or Norway, where it was the wicked, dark, um, depressed. Uh, what's that? No, 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 not that one. That one, in the original Swedish. Oh, that was brilliant. Yeah, they, I mean, the the American one wasn't so bad, but the, the original one was amazing. That one was, I think I saw it with subtitles. Yeah. And that was done as a series. That was like a, you know, that was, it was a Swedish, like, mini series. But, well, they did all the books, I think, but they were each, like, two hours. Right, but it was done, but. It, you have to talk about your research. Oh, I I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, sorry, go ahead. Uh, squirrel, monster squirrel. Yeah. 